When it comes to color theory, I think one of the highest level concepts, the thing that will often actually make most of the difference when it comes to do your images succeed or fail is the idea of warm versus cool colors. This is both a really simple concept to understand, but one that actually goes pretty deep if you try and unpack it. So what I want to do in this video is actually a study session. We're going to look at a whole bunch of artists. I've got a whole chunk of art books. And what I want to do is just go through them and look at how professional artists who have created really good work use the concepts of warm and cool colors, relative temperatures to enhance the feeling of contrast in their scene. Now I've got a couple of different sort of artists we can look at. Some are just really going with a pure color, sort of comic book style. Got some also sort of tonalist things where we can look at how warm and cool can be used for light and shadow contrast. But anyway, we're just going to do a study session, look at the idea of temperature and color theory in detail. Now, as usual for Drawing Codex video, this is not going to be fast paced nor heavily edited. This is just a real time hangout session. We're just going to go through, look at a bunch of books, look at some theory and see how people are actually using this in the real world. I find this is one of the best ways to really understand how a lot of the theory works when you see whether people are actually following and doing it. So some of these things are going to be, hey, look how they're using this. And other ones, it's going to be like, hey, but what, how's this work? They're not doing what a lot of these rules say we should do. So that's where it's going to be interesting. Think of this more like a drawing lesson or a theory session. So hopefully that sounds interesting. Hopefully you will join me. Let's jump in and get started. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name is Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. If you want to learn more about illustration or picture making, you can check out my free illustration mini workshop. This charts my journey going from someone who look really wasn't that good at drawing or art to becoming a professional artist being published. I discuss topics such as how to get more detail and polish in your work, how to think about composition, creating thumbnails for your scenes, as well as a few ideas surrounding how to think about getting professional work. It's free and the link will be in the description. So if that's something you're interested in, go check it out. All right, here we are at the drawing table. Now, the reason that I think warm and cool color theory, the idea of increasing contrast simply by looking at the temperature of either, you know, how saturated a color is versus another color or, you know, whether the actual color, here we've got some sort of red, is a warmer color than the blue in the background. The reason I think this is so important is you can see how this is used in both very sort of cartoony style like you have here with Mobius or Jean Giraud in the art of Edina, where we're dealing with, you know, very sort of comic booky style art. But you also will see exactly the same ideas being employed in a Frank Frazetta image where it's more tonalist and we are dealing less with the idea of, oh, I have a red bit here and a blue bit here, but you actually have the idea of warm sort of highlights and, and lit sides of the form versus cooler sort of shadows. And you can see this on display perfectly in this image. So I just want to sort of unpack this idea and sort of show you what I'm talking about. Because when I look at my art, again, my art is, is quite specific. I have a very sort of specific style, but I think through looking at a bunch of artists and just sort of seeing and exploring how they use these ideas, we can learn a lot about how this idea might relate more specifically to your style. All artists are going to use these things very, very differently. And depending on what style they actually use, they might use it even differently, even more differently still. Um, again, we'll see the difference between Frank Frazetta's painting versus comic art. But let's again look at this is a perfect image. And this really underlines the key concept that you're going to get an enhanced feeling of contrast by modulating the temperature of the shadows versus the highlights or what's lit. All of the shadows here are a much more gray, um, desaturated, uh, you know, sort of version of the, the lit side of the form. You can see the same thing with, uh, you know, this sort of shadow that's falling across the lion's um, or tiger or saber, saber tooth tiger, whatever it is. Um, you know, you can see again, there's a lot of blues here. There's a lot of grays. There's a lot of very, very interesting colors. And 
you can see the difference between the shadows here, the very dark sort of graphic shadows, which is often what you want when you want that sort of impact. But also you often need to do this where we have a female form. We don't want to make that feel too sort of shadowed and sort of graphic. We want to see the form, see the softness of the form. So he still has this really graphic nature to the way he's painting these forms, but it's just done by modulating the temperature. And if you were to kind of zoom up there, again, it's real life, so I can't just zoom, my brain wants to kind of zoom up. But you can actually see there's um, a, a variety of different sort of things going on here. There are some sort of warmer tones here, and he's also painted some, some much, much cooler grays. You can also see this sort of arm here is, you know, very sort of loosely, but it's got a lot of gray on it, right? It's this feeling of like this weird, even though it's a vignette, it, it has this feeling of kind of dappled light. It's really sort of interesting, but again, it's this difference between the temperature of the light and the shadow in an image like this, which is fairly monotone. It's all just yellows, basically yellows, um, sort of reds, oranges. Modulating the temperature is the thing that will really work here. And I think that's what gives it that sense of vibrancy. And yeah, understanding the difference between, you know, those shadows and these kind of shadows here that have more sort of ambient occlusion applied is uh, really, really important. And I think just having your ability to do this, to understand the temperature of shadows versus highlights is super, super important. Here we got another image, and this one is, is very sort of graphic, right? This really speaks to the way that Frazetta, I think, was good at exploring abstraction and very kind of strong picture making where, you know, it has a real grounding in reality, but, but also then it's like, what's going on here? It just kind of looks cool. We have, basically the same color scheme as before oranges but we're modulating where you look and you know how the eye flows simply by sort of placing warm colors uh, in particular areas and this is a good example of where you don't always have to put you know these warm colors you know in the foreground or in the background or whatever it's mainly just a matter of creating visual interest and there's a lot of visual interest created here you're given a variety of different places to look we got sort of here, we got so this nice sort of red here, we've got the nice red planet. There's, there's actually quite a lot of color pop here as well. We've got this giant sort of edifice of sort of orange rock, I'm not sure what's going on there. And again, there's a nice contrast between the lit side of the form, which is sort of yellow and oranges and, and warm colors, and the cool side of the form, right? The shadow, which uh, is very sort of gray. So. Good examples there of sort of using the temperature to sort of modulate where we should look on an abstract level and also just, uh, you know, playing with sort of the feeling of sort of light or shadow. But it's important to understand here that this is just kind of nonsense, right? You know, it's not like there's any sort of strong light here that's, you know, lighting up the wolves as well. You know, it's, it's just fun. It's just illustration. It's just impact. But it creates a very, very interesting look. But all of this is controlled through simple ability to modulate um, grays, which are feeling very cool in this image, versus the sort of more saturated yellows and the really, really bright oranges and reds. Here we have another great example of someone who's really good doing exactly what you're kind of not meant to do, which is have the background be, you know, fluoro orange and, and, and yellow. And, uh, you know, I think this is where, again, you have to understand that depending on what look you're going for and what feeling you're going for, you, you know, may want to sort of go against a lot of those rules. And, you know, this is a good example. There's still a lot of warmth in the foreground, but, you know, you can look at how some of these ideas can influence the story and the narrative. So we kind of are drawn up here, right? We are drawn. And you'd imagine there'd probably be a title here or something, but we are kind of drawn up to this to this area here, right? You know, why? Well, it, it's kind of like a bit creepy that we keep getting sort of drawn up here and then sort of drawn back around and we're drawn away from the sort of basic drama here. Maybe if there kind of wasn't that color, it would just be a little bit, you know, a little bit flat, but because there's the drama of the color, it kind of, you know, raises the rest of it. Again, a lot of this is kind of quasi art criticism. We, we can look and understand, you know, maybe a million ways why this image works or, you know, what, where it doesn't work or whatever. But again, it's always interesting to note that, you know, I would often recommend, hey, don't have an orange background because it'll pull, it'll pull your focus from the, from the foreground. But 
if you're Frazetta, if you have a lot of experience, if you really understand what you're trying to do, anything is possible. Here's an example of some Frazetta comic art, and I'm not always sure because he didn't always color these ones, but you can see that this is colored very differently. It works from a completely different sort of modality. There's no sort of grays in there. There's nothing like that. It's just black plus kind of quite bright color. Um, here's another image that has some sort of more line and, and color sort of style and technique. And, you know, you can see again, because the lines are in there, the colors are a little bit sort of cleaner. It's a little bit more sort of graphic. So again, you know, even artists who, you know, are working in different styles are going to have different ways that they imply uh, apply the concepts of warm and cool and just color theory in general. Okay, if we go back to looking at some Mobius or some Jean Giraud, you can see that we have a really good sort of sense of color that he always tends to have. But, you know, there's many, many different ways that he's also, you know, coloring and, and creating images that, that look good. But here you can see simple application of these basic ideas. We've got, you know, shadows that are cool underneath and you know all of the shadows tend to be or look like they are sort of cooler than their sort of lit counterparts and there's also just you know a general sort of feeling of uh you know again here's a good example we got sort of blue background we got the nice sort of warmer colors of this sort of ship and again a few real sort of strong color pops in the middle and that is gonna you know draw our eye to the sort of foreground makes this kind of fall back and again just sort of really simple color plan but uh you know there's lots of examples of uh mobius really sort of leaning into abstracts that are really bright colors and this is often what i was sort of looking at really early on is kind of how do you do this how do you have the guts to just say this is this is fluoro yellow and this is fluoro purple and this is blue <laughs> A lot of it just does come down to understanding how these things are likely to work and the color vibrancy that is going to occur. It's a very simple image, right? You see, it's very abstract, but by using the color, really turning it up and also just understanding, hey, the, the cool colors are going to recede. The warm colors are going to come forward. It's going to create a very sort of strong image. Again, you know, it kind of makes something out of nothing almost. It's very, very striking. But, you know, uh, likewise, uh, you know, he's very comfortable working in much, much more toned down color spaces. Here you can see there's still the same warm, cool color contrast going on. Very, very toned down look. But, you know, we got these interior spaces that are in shadow, have a more sort of blue color scheme versus the exterior spaces that are a lot warmer. But still, we're dealing with sort of pastel colors here, essentially. And this is actually a really good example of line of color work, purely looking at a sort of warm, cool color contrast and getting very, very striking results, despite, you know, the whole thing just essentially being pastel colors with line work. So, you know, it, it's kind of almost as if there's not a lot of local color here. We're just dealing with these very sort of interesting warm and cool colors. We've got sort of purples and blues versus yellows right and uh yeah and also you know very sort of strong images that really kind of work but you can really drastically change the effect of work of, of line art by kind of how you color it you can see here again it has like a very sort of toned down vibe right again we get into a little bit more sort of color and again it gets really sort of crazy and trippy right? <laughs> as we sort of progress super super cool but still you know staying very 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 toned down and if you kind of compare that to you know some of the other work that might be you know much sort of stronger in terms of in terms of color uh yeah you know you're going to get like a very different look depending on how you color it right so here we still have you know good sense of uh color contrast and again you know jean Giraud mobius is still not doing you know, sort of warm colors in the in the foreground and cool colors in the background. That's just something that tends to work. But you see really sort of good artists are just focusing on how do I entertain the eye? How do I make something interesting? How do I create something vibrant? And you can just see we've got constant sort of blues, yellows. And yeah, really, this does break down into predominantly cool colors versus predominantly warm colors. Again, got these warm colors and this sort of interior that's a lot sort of cooler same thing here these guys are all kind of blue and uh you know again really sort of strong color so you know just sort of modifying 
right? The way that it's colored is going to drastically, I mean, it's a different line color style, but you get the idea. You can drastically change the, the effect by kind of how you actually employ and use these ideas. And uh, yeah, you know, I think you can always kind of see basic, like simple color schemes, simple warm and cool sort of temperatures. And it's very obvious that he has sort of full control over this entire process. Again, really sort of like to use those more sort of pastel subtle colors um, in some of the later work. But yeah, again, super, super strong control of just simple, you know, warm, cool uh, blues and sort of yellows stuff always works and i think also some really good examples of how you can use a line work plus very subtle sort of changes in in temperature to create something that that looks very very sophisticated if we look at the classic capcom design works there's going to be a huge variety of different art in here that all succeeds in different ways but I think one of the interesting things that you kind of find is, again, just the variety and the different ways that you can use these ideas of sort of warm and cool sort of shadows. You can see that frequently there is a lot of, um, you know, sort of cool shadows in some of these spaces. But I think also one of the things I kind of took away from a lot of this sort of Capcom style work is that often the shadows work quite warm, right? This really has that kind of high energy sort of vibrant look. And I feel like often that really made a lot of these characters kind of stand out against the sort of video game background or, you know, if they were on arcades. And uh, I think this is something that's sort of worth looking at, right? Depending on how much your character needs to be in an environment, you may want to maybe not lean into quite as much sort of warm and cool. Or in this case, really what's happening is that the highlights are cool and the shadows are warm. And I think this is something, again, you can see in a lot of this particular art. A lot of the shadows are very sort of warm, um, sort of red. You can see a lot of them get, you know, very, very red versus the, the skin tone, which is the, st the same kind of skin tone you would normally have. It's just that, yeah, it's not getting blue. It's not getting sort of washed out. And, uh, you know, I think this is also something that's really sort of worth looking at. What this does by, you know, really increasing the vibrancy of, of a lot of the shadows is, you know, it makes sure that, things don't look muddy and this is one of the things that was such a challenge for me early on i'd always be making the shadows too dark and, and then it'd say ah oh, cool shadows warm highlights and then i do that again you can see each of the artists is doing sort of different you know in different ways some of these shadows do seem like they're kind of cooler but yeah you often have like this really sort of dynamic look when you do have the the shadows be kind of warm um so here we got uh, again sort of warm cool where all the shadows seem to be a lot sort of cooler and that's kind of really working to create some contrast same thing here um, again a lot of sort of blue shadows versus warm warm highlights but uh you know just as much we we have this kind of look where the the shadows are, are kind of quite warm and i think all of this kind of works a lot of it depends on uh, like what is the environment they're in? Do you need an environment? A lot of art that people do doesn't really sit in an environment. It's just characters. It's just pinups, right? So again, this is pushing some of the characters uh, to the background. Looking at how a lot of these artists handle these very big sort of complicated illustrations, I think is really, really useful because this is hard. Doing a million characters, making them all fit together uh, is a huge challenge. So sort of looking at how they do that from a color perspective, I think is very useful. Also, one of the challenges you would have with sort of Street Fighter stuff is that, you know, everyone's different colors, right? So making these covers really work is something that's, that's worth looking at. Like, what do they do? Go in there with an eyedropper, look at, you know, what's happening to all the different sort of shadows. How do they handle it? How do they push some characters back? How do they push some characters forward? Um, yeah, always super interesting to see the, the tricks that people use when they're creating these big epic sort of covers but yeah it's something to think about is that if you are wanting a really sort of high energy sort of graphic look often warm sort of shadows and you know sort of neutral slash uh, cool relative to the shadows um, highlights is, is something that can can really really work and again the most important thing i think you can take away from this is that often the way that we get this feeling of it's still being cartoony, right? It, it kind of still feels like, hey, there's not that much rendering here. 
right? You can see on Ryu's face here, you know, there's not that much rendering, but it still feels as if there's lots of form. And that's just done by modifying the temperature and making sure there's a good color variation between the sort of, you know, light and the dark. You can see in this one, um, that wasn't done as much, having to sort of really sort of render those forms. And yeah, it kind of looks like a slightly different kind of character. Um, and yeah, not quite sort of uh, delineating some of the facial forms either. So it, it is really useful to understand how to subtly change the temperature of shadows and highlights because it often leads to a really, really clear, clean image that still feels like it has lots of form. Here you can see lots of these shadows have uh, very sort of blue tones to them, good sort of warm, cool contrast in those classic dark stalker designs. Oh, there we go, up a little bit. But uh, yeah, you know, th there's not a lot of like main sort of key takeaways here, but I think you can learn a lot just by sort of studying art and looking at how this is handled. You know, if I sort of look at this image, it's very bright, it's very colorful. Uh, and that's because, again, there's not a huge value differentiation between the sort of light and dark sides of the form, but there is a good temperature change. Um, so that's one of the things I really sort of took away from a lot of this uh, Capcom art. Um, although, again, you know, there's no such thing as, you know, Capcom arts, just different artists who have, uh, you know, created sort of key art for it. But anyway, well worth looking at and understanding why these different styles work. Now, if we look at something a little bit different, Sergeant John Singer Sergeant is often lauded as someone who, you know, mastered much of artistic craft and really kind of you know, reached a, a pinnacle of a lot of sort of painting, rendering, and did, you know, do a lot of good mixing of uh, impressionism, um, having really sort of good tonalist abilities, and uh, yeah, just like generally a bit of a, a talent, let's say. Um, and, uh, you know, you can kind of see that uh, a lot of these same ideas of thinking about sort of warm and cool uh, very much relate to sort of toneless painting. So, you know, John Singer Sargent is, although a lot of his sort of images do have a lot of sort of impressionist qualities to them, a lot of them are just essentially based on light. The thing that we feel is the light across the form, the way it kind of changes and describes the, the person. And... The way that we're often, you know, getting those forms to really sort of pop and, you know, for your sort of eye to really sort of go to the, the other character's eye is by modifying the subtlety of the differential in grays, right, and sort of darks and, you know, looking at, you know, forms that are in light versus forms that are in shadow and, you know, sort of graying some of them out. You can see a lot of this on the face, right, the way that the shadow side of the form tends to be a lot sort of grayer. So if you want to sort of look at how this applies to painting, it's it's less about sort of background is cool and foreground is warm, right? It, it's all just kind of one sort of, again, sort of more tonal painting. The thing that we, the, the, again, there's not a huge variety of palettes. Um, there's not a huge variety of different actual colors used. Limited palette, that's often how tonalist painting kind of works quite well. But we can really see the same ideas of warm cool being used to kind of pull the eye and sort of make us, uh, you know, sort of not focus in some areas. And uh, yeah, you know, especially when we look at the temperature difference between the light and the dark side of the face. Now, one of the things and the interesting things about Sargent is that, uh, you know, you kind of look at some of these things. I think this is also a really good example of, uh, and again, outdoor sort of setting. He's really sort of pushing the blue reflected light from the sky um, and some of that sort of filling everything in. Uh, just like amazing, amazing um, ability to kind of draw from, draw from life. But often what you're kind of looking at here is the way that the sort of artist is going to use warm and cool in the shadows versus the lights. That really is the key and the most important thing. We're using a lot of grays and a lot of subtlety and the way that the sort of contrast between the light and the dark is created is through that sort of color and the subtle modification. Now, as I was saying, one of the things that's really tricky about Sargent is everyone kind of looks at these and they're like, oh yeah, that looks kind of easy. Um, and, you know, people often try and do little studies of Sargent uh, sort of portraits and things. And what you find is it's a lot harder than it looks. So often he's really good at making it just appear as if, let's see if we can get to another sort of good portrait, right? It, really good at just kind of making it appear as if the form is just subtly moving across the face, 
right? And you kind of don't think that there's actually that much dark or light, but it's often the subtlety with which the different sort of um, sort of tones of the face are handled in terms of temperature, right? You can see like this le this nostril here is actually really, really bright. Um, this one's a lot darker. Just the way that the temperature is sort of handled as the light moves across the lips. And yeah, it just kind of feels like, oh, this is the same color as this. It's just that this is in the shadow. And when you actually go and try and pick like, but what is this color versus what is that color? It's very sophisticated. So you can see here, again, we have the lit side of the face and there's a big change in sort of temperature between these sort of bright highlights, again, more white um, coming out of the, the paint tube versus, you know, these. And you can see he's turning the form uh, in many ways a lot with sort of temperature change. So very, very sophisticated use of warm and cool colors across the sort of rendered form. And, and I think you probably can't get much better than Sargent in terms of studying that if you do you really will learn a lot if you want to learn to paint, which is not normally what we sort of talk about on this channel, but I think it's really, really important to understand um, how these concepts apply to different types of art, as I was talking about with Frazetta. When it comes to color, color theory, I always like to reference uh, Karaskoui and Hubert um, on uh, many of their sort of collaborations. And I think, uh, again, my understanding is the, the artist is actually it's a couple, so a sort of married couple of artists who do the work together. And Hubert is, uh, I think, you know, one of the my favorite uh, sort of um, sort of bon dessiné colorists. And uh, I think in this case, he actually did the uh, the writing. Um, yeah. So anyway, super interesting sort of uh, again scenario and colors. So yeah, super interesting way that we would uh, you know sort of apply a lot of these sort of concepts so the, the thing that you'll notice here is this the color here is so abstract but there's just a good symphony of warm and cool colors and very sort of subtle applications of it again you can see you know in the background here we're just getting a little bit less saturated we got an, a lot of like really sort of interesting these sort of pale blues there's just always a really really good color vibrance on the page you sort of open it up and you're seeing very, very sophisticated um, usage of color. Even though it's very simple, I think all of these pages just always look very, very interesting, right? Super sort of bold use of sort of yellow here, you see, right? This kind of sort of progresses. Um, and again, I think this is a, a really sort of good example of how um, thinking about comics in terms of the overall sort of page is a really good idea because I always find that, uh, you know, again, when I sort of look at a, a page in general that, uh, yeah, there's just sort of heaps of, of vibrancy. But, um, you know, a lot of these are kind of quite monotone sort of color schemes. There's not a lot of sort of trying to set up massive parallax, but there's a lot of subtlety. So, again, very, very interesting sort of subtle approach. Always very, very pretty colors. They always kind of work, always look good. And yeah, I think uh, if you're interested in color, um, and especially as it relates to sort of comic books and, and how they're used, um, I've learned a lot by studying the work of, work of Hubert, and especially again, collaborations with these sort of artists. But uh, yeah, great example of how you can, you know, again, go from sort of very bright to very sort of toned down. You can use very sort of subtle color combinations. But uh, yeah, a lot of the ways that this is working is just with these sort of different pastels, right? You got these kind of blues and this kind of pastel yellow, and it's just that subtle color vibrancy that really kind of just always pops, right? Um, again, and I think it's a good example of where you can get the same warm, cool color contrasts happening. Again, we can see the sort of slight uh, warm characters against this kind of blue background but just very subtle and then when we need right we're just kind of going oh it's bright red for some reason again but often that's one of the things that will really kind of help these uh, sort of comics get to the next level and um, you know really sort of I, I think a lot of this stuff really sort of rises above often what people look at and think oh this is so simple but again this this is why French comics are so good because we're able to kind of combine um, a lot of sort of really sophisticated feelings and emotions and characters with, um, again, often through color. And uh, I think, uh, you know, when you color comics really well, especially in the line and color style, it kind of becomes something a little bit magical. All right, that's all we got time for on this particular video. Now, 
Hopefully that was interesting, just a short little sort of look at some different art styles and how they apply the concept of warm and cool. The interesting thing here is that I can give you a lot of really simple takeaways when it comes to color theory, especially warm and cool, that will kind of always work. But you'll actually see a lot of those artists who are really good at just doing the exact opposite. And I think this often speaks to the fact that when it comes to art rules and art theory, what we're talking about is just simple plans, things that work, things that people have tried before. So I can always tell you that warm colors come forward, cool colors recede, put your warmer colors in your focal areas or your foreground and you know your cooler colors in the background. That's always going to work, right? It, it's always going to work. But you can also get really cool effects by doing exactly the opposite. And often that is what you want feeling of dissonance, feeling of like, oh, that's strange. Something's wrong. I keep looking here. I don't know why. Um, yeah. And a lot of this is understanding the art that you want to make and how these sort of rules apply to it. And I think it's really good to understand that, you know, these rules will help you. They often will take your work out of like, oh, it's all muddy. It's all giant mess. Understanding and applying some structure and logic to it is a really good way to sort of get out of that muck, right? And start to kind of get some logic. But as you've seen, once you do that, the sky's the limit. It really is just a matter of thinking about controlling the viewer's eye, making them interested, making them want to look, and giving them some kind of sense of logic and feeling and emotion. And some of this stuff is intuitive. Um, some of this stuff is, you know, artists just looking at what they think is good. The trick with a lot of these rules is that they're there for us to fall back on. If the image you're working on doesn't work, then that's where you can, you know, fall back on those rules and, you know, sort of have fun with that. But uh, fundamentally, this is all a matter of you being sort of artistic, um, experimenting, finding out what works and just understand that fundamentally all we're trying to do is control the viewer's eye. Warm and cool color contrast is a great, great way to do that. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below, whether this kind of helped you to understand it. Color theory is very sort of complicated and simple at the same time. There's many rabbit holes. There's many reasons why this thing works here, but not here. So a lot of it is, again, just you understanding and looking at art and trying to get a feeling for how you are going to make your images work. Anyway, that's all I got for this one. We'll catch you around. Happy drawing.